comic get? Where comics and television collide. We're your hosts, I'm Shannon. I'm John Wise. And t today we're going to be going over a few shows that uh, we watched this past week, uh, comic book TV shows, uh, The Walking Dead, Supernatural, Arrow, Supergirl, uh, Legends of Tomorrow, Flash. Um, was there an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. this past week? Um, no, no, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is on the uh, mid-season hiatus. So I may have you go over uh, what's happened so far this season then. Next week. Next week? I have to catch up. Alright. I'm caught up, I've just got to refresh. First, before we do that, uh, while we've been waiting to film, I overheard John talking to some of his customers here at Geeking Out Comics. 2924 North Martin Luther King Jr. Drive in Decatur, Illinois. I had to plug that, sorry. <laughs> it's fine, man. I was going to have you do it at the end anyway. Have you seen my podcasts? Yes, I have. I was in a podcast. Number count. Do you want I'll talk to you. <laughs> I may actually do that to you soon. Okay, sounds good. Okay. So uh, I overheard John talking to some of his customers uh, about how the Deadpool movie has affected his business uh, while we were waiting to uh, shoot today. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. Deadpool, if you haven't seen the movie first off, I don't know what you're waiting for, go and see it. Because I know Shannon's waiting for a double date. Go see it and then double date. That's my thought. I mean, my brother would kill me, man. He doesn't have to know. <laughs> um, well, he's going now. Deadpool. He's going to watch the <laughs> I'll vouch for you. Um, so at opening night, uh, awesome movie. I've seen it twice. I know people have already seen it three times and five times. But even before the Deadpool movie came out, I couldn't keep a single thing on the shelf Deadpool. So if you're looking for anything Deadpool, by all means, come in and check, out, check things out. <coughs> right now I have a Deadpool bank and a Deadpool uh, imported Lego figure. That's about it. You might find some uh, uncanny X-Force with Deadpool in it. That's about it. So... And this is the story, not just with this comic book store, but a lot of comic book stores are having a hard time keeping anything Deadpool in the store. So just to kind of give you a heads up, Deadpool is hot right now. It yeah. outperformed Star Wars. I, opening, night, opening night, it outdid Star Wars. It, it also outdid every other R-rated movie. And they're not talking about having Superman vs. Batman being R-rated now because of the Deadpool. Blu -ray. The Blu-ray. The Blu-ray, uh, I heard, is going to be unrated. So, I mean, Deadpool has affected um, a lot of comic book movies. Now, hopefully it doesn't affect the ones that shouldn't be affected. Right. Because they're wanting to make uh, Wolverine a rated R, finally. Yeah. But uh, when you go out and you say, oh, we're going to do a rated R Avengers, or we're going to do a rated R Spider-Man, we're yeah. going to do a rated R, we don't need those. Superman so, needs to be family friendly. Superman, Batman needs to be on the verge of family friendly and R. So maybe PG-13. A hard PG-13. A hard PG-13, maybe close to an R, but, yeah. But when you get a Superman and Batman movie together, that needs to be PG-13 for yeah. sure. Do what, that, that's a smart idea, doing the unrated <coughs> for home, and then doing the, um, the Edge release, PG-13. Um, but kudos to the filmmakers for Deadpool, because they were going R all the way. Definitely, if you've read it to any comic books, Deadpool is a rated R comic book. It's a mature title. Um, kids come in here, when I do have them try to buy them, I'm like, I need your parents to come in. And yeah, the last thing you want is, last you, you fucking sold my kids. What is this? What is this? Well, that's Deadpool cutting the guy's head off and laughing about it, making him talk like a puppet. You wouldn't let your kids watch The Walking Dead. Why would you let them read a Deadpool? You might want to rethink that. What? There's been plenty of parents coming in here who said, oh, yeah, my, uh, it's a family event. Every I don't even let my 13-year-old daughter watch. Every Sunday, yeah, 13, 12, 10, I've had parents come in with their 7-year-olds. Like, do you have any Walking Dead comics? I'm like, yeah, they're here. And here, but it's over there, go get one. And the, if, you've, if you're a fan of the show and you're a fan of the comics, you the comic books, the show is graphic. The show is gory. The comics are worse. Yeah, the um, comics would be like rated TVMA. I mean, there there is a scene there is a scene in the comic book where a woman I want to <coughs> who gets shot with a shotgun through the stomach and she's pregnant. <laughs> Dragon's <Zor> power. <laughs> Don't so, ask. So this past Sunday on The Walking Dead, we had a hellacious episode. It takes place two months after the previous episode. Uh, Carl's finally healed up. They skipped over the whole part where he was in a coma and 
lost his memory. Well, that would have been kind of Carl injured in coma part two. Yeah. Because they did that with Herschel. Yeah. And they've probably done that again in between. Carl needs to just wear a freaking bicycle <laughs> helmet and kids on the floor. <laughs> he's not running off. If, on if he's not or... running off going, Daddy! Or Mommy! Or I'm going to play with a zombie. Or sitting on a roof eating a big old can of pudding. Hey, I didn't do that episode. I wanted a big old can of pudding. Because <laughs> I need it. Well, they've got it for sale, you know. They, it's a bag. They actually handed those out on Talking Dead and stuff. It was cool. Which, by the way, brings me a point. If you're watching Walking Dead and not watching Talking Dead after, get on it. Too. Because my girlfriend was totally against the first couple seasons that they did Talking Dead. And I made her sit down and watch an episode. I think it was with Kevin Smith on there. And uh, from that episode on, she's been watching, she gets pissed off when she misses it. Has to go to work and miss it. Yeah. So, catch Talking Dead. You get a lot of little tidbits like... Um, when Rick is carrying Carl after he gets shot in the eye, that's actually a dummy, but a really dumb FX dummy, and it looked just like him. Yeah, I mean, team excellent that. special effects. Kudos to Rick Perfect. Baker. Um, also, this past Sunday, we had uh, Rick and Daryl found Jesus. As did uh, uh, Rick, Rick and Michelle. And Michelle. We'll Michelle. talk a little bit more like th about that a little bit later. Um, <laughs> did you happen to see the uh, spoof video someone did of Rick and Daryl going after Jesus with the Benny Hill. Benny Hill. Which is funny because that was a request by uh, Chris Hardwick yeah. from Talking Dead. He goes, somebody go out there and make the Benny Hill video for this because it's going to be funny. And it was hilarious. All they had to do was speed it up a little bit, a little uh, bit. to make it match. And maybe video. occasionally have a few half-naked girls walk around. <laughs> yeah. That would have been just 100% kudos. Awesome. And so after Rick and Daryl found Jesus, uh, Jesus... <laughs> Jesus lights off some fireworks in the back. I knew this was coming. He steals the truck that Rick and Daryl got. Why did Rick and Daryl leave their car, their sports car, at the uh, place where they found the truck? Why didn't one of them drive Why the truck? One drive the truck, one drive the car. Because it wouldn't have been funny. True. It wouldn't have been funny. That whole episode was hilarious. We needed that. Actually, at first, when we got the uh, mid-season return, we needed another episode like this to kind of lighten things up a yeah. little bit. That was kind of an intense episode, so. And then they they get the truck back, and Rick parks it by the lake. He actually takes the time to back it up right on the well, edge of the not, lake. Well, let's not forget. Before that, they thought they they, they thought they left Jesus tied in the uh, in the middle of the road, where in a knot that it would take him a couple hours to get out. Where it didn't take him a couple hours because apparently he's got you know the speed force in him. <laughs> Because uh, next thing you know, he's on top of the freaking Well, with a name like Jesus, you know, apparently you can... You know, you, you, know, you probably he went like... <laughs> and boom, he's on the... You know, you know why, didn't, why didn't he just walk on water and get the truck back out? We don't know if he's not going to do that. True. He'd be like... Actually, you know what? They're safe. They're safe. They have a lake full of zombie water. He can turn it into zombie wine. There you there go. You go. <laughs> so... Previous episode... So gotcha. after they get the truck and they Rick takes the time to back it up while Daryl's chasing Jesus around. <laughs> Daryl's chasing Jesus. He found him! <laughs> Praise Jesus! Not Something even, happens. Not even Jesus. It's Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Something happens and the truck just goes into the pond. Well, it's, it's what happened when Jesus and Daryl were fighting in the truck. Uh, after their game of tag, somebody hit the, uh, um, the, the, the neutral, and it just, it could have not slant, it just started to back into the lake. It, it, it was pointless to even get the truck in the first place. If it wasn't for the truck, they wouldn't have met Jesus. <laughs> That's true. It was divine intervention. Yeah. There you go. So, we were talking a little bit earlier about how in, uh, in the comics... Uh, it eventually gets revealed that Jesus is homosexual. We don't Nothing know if wrong he, with that. We don't know if he's homosexual or bisexual or what. Which there's, in there's the nothing show, wrong with. We him. know, but in the book, um, I think I think he is just straight out. He's homosexual. He's gay. And we were talking about how what if later on in the show, Rick and Jesus, Darryl. I mean, yeah, Daryl and Jesus, Jesus kind of. What if Carol finds Jesus in another way? <laughs> well, there was talk um, a couple seasons, I think it was a couple seasons back, because uh, it, was, it was 
revealed that Geralt might possibly be gay or bi, with, which uh, Norman Reedus had actually stated he would be okay if the character was I, bi or gay. I think they should make so, him bi rather than full well, on gay. Know, because if, he, then, if he ends up with Jesus before he ends up with Carol first, I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think anyway, a lot of people are going. <laughs> Carol's cookies. Throw the bend over, look at the flowers. <laughs> Spencer and being totally erratic and apparently that's what it seemed. And at the same time, Carl follows Enid out there. Again, I'm trying to like Enid, but she's making it really hard. Yeah. Uh, she's kind of becoming uh, the uh, uh, Laura of the show. Mm. Rick's now deceased, half zombie wife, whatever. I think they're going to make her into kind of what Carol's daughter was in the comics. Yeah, they need they need a maybe a Carol replacement. Um, and so uh, Carl and Enid uh, end up running into Deanna. Who's Deanna? <laughs> uh, um, Deanna's been zombie. Deanna zombie, yes. Uh, Enid gets ready to kill her, but Carl tells her no, no. Let her go. Go back to town. It's eventually revealed towards the end that Michelle knew that uh, Carl let her go. Uh, let her Carl, go. Carl, Carl let her go. Led Deanna to her Mich son. Michonne and Spencer. So, so that Spencer, Spencer could, could take care of yeah, family because, business. Yeah, family business, you know, which I don't completely agree, disagree with. I don't either. I mean, it, it was some. You know, if, if you're able to do that, I mean, go for it. Carl killed his own mother. After. And that's how we become a man. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, also, um, let's see. Finally, at the end of the show, Michonne! Rick's got jungle fever. And it brought mints to bring them together. <laughs> and uh, all I can say about that is I wish they would have shown the end scene from Jesus' perspective. <laughs> Jesus has been found again. That's how good this is. You, yeah. find, you find Jesus. Yeah, Rick and Michonne found Jesus. <laughs> this is so good. So, uh, what what would you rate this episode of Walking Dead? Ah, uh, you know, it's definitely one of the top uh, episodes. That's the last that last episode I gave it like a near perfect ten. It was a nine point five. This one I'm gonna go ahead and actually probably give us the same about nine point five. I'll, I'll say close to a ten as well. My wife hasn't really been too impressed with the Walking Dead the past couple seasons. It's been kind of slow. It hasn't really been very intense. Uh, it's starting to build back up that intensity. Uh, now that we're getting ready to get into the Negan storyline. Who's Negan? Who's Negan? <laughs> Nibble on that for a while. <laughs> I, we didn't, we, we, we need, I know this was last episode, we really need to touch on the beginning. Yeah, um, where five minutes blows. of the last episode, the mid-season return, where uh, they basically replay uh, Negan's people finding Daryl, wanting to take their stuff out of the truck. Uh, he sends Daryl, ha <laughs> ha with a minion behind the truck to grab whatever's back there. And, Rocket launcher. And, and of course, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, it would be Abraham. Yeah, Abraham. Man of a million questions. Who's Negan? What? Why should we give you our I told you no more questions. And he was just about, just about with Abraham and, 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 and Sasha? Yeah, yeah. Sasha? Yeah. It's getting ready to getting ready get, to pull the trigger. Pull it. Kaboom! Just all you just see like is body parts everywhere. It looks like minced hamburger. Carol comes out with this rocket launcher, just like, huh? Ready? And we're off. <laughs> Credits. Greatest scene in The Walking Dead ever. It's by on far. YouTube. You can watch it over and over and over yeah. again. It's worth watching. Um, fast forward to what's 
Um, all right, so next on the agenda is Supergirl. I know John doesn't watch Supergirl. I need to. I know, uh, they, I know they've introduced Martian Manhunter, a horrible uh, Tin Man, Red Tornado looking character. <laughs> and I know uh, they're going to do a, uh, uh, what, a Brainiac Supergirl. And, uh, uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, it's actually going to be uh, Laura Vandevoort is going to play Laura Indigo. Uh, Laura Vandevoort played Supergirl in Smallville. She's going to play Indigo, which is like a female version of Brainiac, who now, was uh, tra uh, imprisoned in Fort Ross. Now, the episode that I know makes me want to go back and watch everything to catch up is, of course, they're going to be doing a Flash Supergirl yes. crossover. Uh, so. We'll talk more about the Flash in just a little bit, but uh, this past week on uh, Supergirl, uh, Supergirl fought the Master Jailer. Uh, he was a prison guard at Fort Ross. Uh, all the other prison guards were killed um, in the escape. He was the only one left. Um, so he went to Earth and started tracking down all the uh, former inmates. Um, Jimmy Olsen and uh, some of her other friends are talking about uh, telling her she should release Maxwell Lord from the uh, DEO prison. Uh, Nobody knows where Max Lord is right now. The public doesn't know where Max Lord is because he discovered Supergirl's secret identity and uh, has been trying to basically destroy her. So they locked her, locked him up. So is he kind of her Lex Luthor? Pretty much. He's basically the Lex Luthor of Supergirl. Okay. I don't really... They should have played more towards the comics with Max Lord's character made him more like a Trojan horse. Like he was in the comics. Cat um, uh, also is tired of Kara, Kara, however you pronounce her name. Well, I'm tired of that cat, Grant. So. <laughs> <laughs> tired of her basically skimming out on her responsibilities and everything. So hired, she hires a second assistant, uh, which turns out to be Cyobon Smythe, who, as comic readers know, becomes the Silver Banshee. Um, and there's a lot of animosity between her and Kara right off the bat. Um, she's a... She's a... Can I say it? Sure. She's a kiss-ass. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Jimmy tries to convince Kara to release Maxwell Lord. Um, Kara defeats the Master Jailer and ends up releasing Max. Um, and one of the things he says is, but I know your identity, why would you release me when you know I could possibly take your identity public? And she's like, well, you do that, and we'll send all this information we've gathered on you to the proper authorities, and you'll be put in prison. So he's like, okay, so it's a catch-22, basically. And, um, running joke in the show is Superman's face. All season long, they, they talk about Superman. They they show him either from the waist down or from the back of the head or whatever. I did hear rumors going about, and he'd be willing to do it. Also, is Tom Willing? Yeah. Uh, Tom Willing would make Superman as Superman. As Tom Willing would make the perfect Superman. They I well, they didn't. That yeah, I I didn't care the way they ended. The story nobody, nobody cared how the end of that story um, But if you go back and read uh, Superman, um, what was it? I think it's the first couple issues of Superman Birthright, Birthright or Birthright. Birthright. Um, the younger version of Su uh, Clark Kent Year one. looks identical to Tom Lowe. Yeah. Um, another thing I'm not too sure, too sure about in the Supergirl series is how they did Hank Kenshaw. Um, Hank Henshaw is the Martian Manhunter. Uh, in the comic books, he's uh, an elderly gentleman. He's uh, a Reed Richards ripoff. Basically, so he's, except he's a villain who later gets turned into uh, uses Kryptonian technology to become a cyborg to fool everybody after Superman's death to fool everybody into believing that he's the real Superman come back. And half his face is like all Terminator and. Half his body's all skeleton, metal skeleton. And eventually he, he takes he control of the man hunters. And but yeah, he ends up taking, he had to kind of find out he's a big boy, uh, him along, along with Mongo. He destroyed Coast City. Coast City, causing other events to happen in Green Lantern. He 
He later takes over the Manhunters. He becomes a young Lantern. So would you say that Hank Henshaw is responsible for Parallax? Indirectly. Um, Parallax has always been an entity that existed. He was put in the uh, green batter, big battery charger on Oa uh, in prison, which is why the other Green Lantern's weaknesses was yellow. Right. Um, Sinestro would be thrown in, a uh, trapped with the battery. In there, Sinestro meets Parallax and makes it to where Parallax can be, I guess, somehow into Hal Jordan's ring whenever he used it. And that's how it ended up affecting him. And, and now Sinestro is him. Parallax. Is he on the Sinestro? Sinestro is Parallax now. After, uh, after he disbanded the uh, Sinestro Corps and destroyed the uh, Sinestro Lantern, massive one. Oh. Uh, See, I missed some He, he is there. Parallax now. Um, so back to Supergirl. Um, fun fact, the girl who plays Cyobon Smythe, the Silver Banshee, is... Bum, bum, bum. Robbie Amell's fiance. Yes, it is. And Robbie Amell plays Fire, played Firestorm on The Flash. The Flash. Season, uh, uh, he, he was on The Flash. Season one. He did. He played uh, Death Storm on Legends of, on Legends of Tomorrow. No, it was on Flash. Well, it was on Flash. Yeah, it was on that uh, Earth Two. Earth Two. You're right. You're right. Um, when I, I first saw. I didn't really care for that either. And a big thing with uh, this episode of Supergirl is Jimmy is debating on telling Lucy Lane the truth about Supergirl. He and wouldn't do that. See, th he this actually, is he actually told Supergirl. Though. He actually told Kara that if him and Lucy Lane are going to succeed in a relationship, he's got to tell her the truth about who Supergirl really is. See, that's one of my big problems with the show. I watched the first episode of Big. And then I had a big problem with the characterization of Jimmy. His personality is just totally wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cat Grant's personality, again, totally wrong. Yeah. The um, fact that Jimmy actually knows Superman's identity for all these years. Wrong. I, I, I like the idea of Jimmy knowing who Superman really is. Because he's a good pal. Yeah, but having that introduced right off the bat, you know. Because yeah. um, he can deduce who Supergirl is, yeah. but yeah. Doesn't agree with it. Uh, I'll give this episode, give it probably a five. I'll have to agree with him because I haven't seen it. Yeah. So. Um, next on the list is The Flash. The Flash, I've seen that one. Uh, last week on The Flash, we finally got uh, See Earth 2. Uh, we saw, uh, a few weeks ago we saw, the, or we saw Earth 2. We met uh, Earth 2 Barry. We Killer, met Frost, Killer Frost, Death Storm. Storm. We met of, uh, Earth 2 Iris. Yeah, Earth 2 uh, 5, which went by the name of. Um, Who's his name? That's a good question. It was Earth 2 Five. Yeah. And he was a bad guy. Yeah. Really, he knew his powers. Yeah. Um, he, he put Five to shame. Yeah. And really geeky, he was geeking out on himself, which was really cool. Right. So in this week's Flash, uh, Wells, Cisco, and Barry agreed not to discuss anything about Earth 2 because of everything that happened. Uh, Deathstorm, Robbie Amell's character, uh, was killed by Zoom. Oh, I just want to touch on real quick Deathstorm. Okay. As soon as we're on Deathstorm, I have no objection to Deathstorm being Earth 2 Robbie and all that. But um, if they weren't going to use the skull face, they should at least use the blue flame. Right. They got the black outfit, but they didn't use the blue flame. And that was, they needed to betray him just a little better. And it was a disappointment because so far the Flash has been pretty much on top with uh, costumes, or yeah. just honoring the original costume somehow in the comics. And I was a little disappointed. I would like to see the Flash with the yellow boots, though. Yeah, I think it's coming. I hope so. He needs a little more yellow. Not enough yellow. Um, we know now that Lila, which is Diggle's, uh, would you say white? They, they, they were married, but are they, are Diggle and Lila married still? Or re remarried? They've got a kid together who ends up becoming, wait for it. His son ends up becoming Connor Hawk. That's right. We're talking about Arrow now. Yeah. Well, we're talking about Flash, so that's why I was saying wait for it, but you kind of looked at me like... I was like, like I thought we were on Flash. We're talking about Arrow now. 
Well, yes, Dig Diggle, Diggle and Lila were on the flashlight. Lila is now the director of Argus because former director Amanda Waller was murdered. Dead. We killed Amanda Waller. And again, disagree because it goes back to the whole Suicide Squad character. The Suicide Squad can't yeah. be in Arrow or Flash or anywhere else on TV. So they had to kill Amanda Waller. Same reason why they killed Deathstroke or Dead, Deadshot. Now, you may know a little bit more about uh, Argus than I do. No. No? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's just a, it's a secret government agency that deals with metahumans. I think aliens, it's an offshoot you know, of uh, the Daisy Jones. Yeah. Um, Suicide Squad. <clears throat> Cisco tells Caitlin about her being Killer Frost in Earth Two, and there's this whole thing about Cisco's constantly keeping an eye on Caitlin because he thinks she's going to turn into Killer Frost. Um, Barry tells Iris and Joe about their Earth Two counterparts. Uh, and at first, Joe is like, oh, wow, I was this lounge singer, and blah, 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 blah. And then he finds out his counterpart was Pim. And his um, counterpart didn't like Barry either. Right. They didn't like each other, apparently. Right. Um, because the Iris in Earth 2 became a cop to further Barry Earth 2's career. Um, um, side note, Barry Earth 2 is very much a dork. Yeah. So... I don't have much traction on it. You want me to climb the ice box? I don't have traction. These are slip shoes. Yeah, yeah. that was... Uh, finally, we'll talk about um, Zoom. The big reveal occurred this week on Flash on who, kind of who Zoom is. He finally removed his mask to reveal... Jay Garrick. Yes. Uh, which is weird because Jay he Garrick... He was carrying Jay Garrick. Jay Garrick fought Jay Garrick and it was carrying Jay Garrick. And, and there I was think another Jay, Jay Garrick in prison. And I think Jay... Well, did they reveal that? And he's the guy in the metal mask? They kind of did because that's when he was tapping. see the blonde hair. He was tapping and doing the military code. Right. And it spelled out J. That's my that my theory is that's Jay Garrick. So how many Jay Garricks do we have playing around? Well, we got Jay Garrick from Earth One who we're thinking is Hunter Zolman from... I mean, Jay Garrick from, yeah. Well, Jay the, Garrick. well the Hunter, the, the Jay Garrick in Earth 1 apparently doesn't have any powers. This is a normal guy. He's basically like Barry Hill too. They assume. assume. They never actually confirmed that he doesn't have powers. Uh, he could also be Zoom. Yes. He could very well be Zoom. Uh, we have Jay Garrick. Who from is, Earth 2. Who, who, whose powers are going on and off. Yeah. Like, and randomly. Then, and then there's another the, Jay Garrick who's. Possibly Jay Garrick in the Metal Mask on Earth 2 imprisoned. Who may be the. Uh, Starts with an R. What's his name? The rifle. The rifle. Yes. The rifle. So. We're old. We can have brain farts. Don't judge. <laughs> I got gray hair coming. My beard. I dyed my beard. I have beards. no hair except for this. So you don't want to see it. Um, so in one month's time, we touched on this a little bit earlier, the Flash will appear on Supergirl. Yeah. At the end of March. So I might actually watch like, that episode. I think it's like March 25th or something like that. Yeah. I think they're taking a brief break now, aren't they? Yeah, yeah so. everyone's on hiatus right now. Um, I know, I think uh, Agent Carter's getting ready to end, because um, next month Agent Shield's coming back on. So that's going to be really cool. I don't think you're, you're an Agent Shield guy. No, no I'm the Agent I caught the first few episodes of season one. I stuck with him the very first episode. But I, I love this episode. First episode. I don't know. It seems more like it, it started to become more like Smallville, where you had the the superpowered freak of the week. That's type deal. pretty much the start of almost every first season of a series like that. It got good towards the end. Second season was better. Uh, as soon as they, as soon as uh, Captain America when it both came out, and they had the big, oh everybody's with Hydra, I don't trust anybody. That's when the series really just took off, caught right. its stride, and now they're doing the Inhumans thing. So now, this week's episode of Arrow. Again, well, wait, again, let's to, go back to Flash real up, quick. Uh, I had to catch up on this week's Arrow like I saw last week, so I heard a little bit about it this week. Let's so, go back to Flash real quick. I run what, a business, I remember. What would you rate The Flash? The Flash. This uh, past week's episode. This past week's Flash, from what I read, um, I'll, give it a, I'll give it a solid uh, 7.5. When I see it, I'll put another rating out there probably. But. I'd say it was probably about an 8. Um, the reveal wasn't that wasn't that surprising. It wasn't surprising. I kind of figured it was it was him. It was Garrick. So uh, let's go back to Arrow now. Um, 
this past week on Arrow, Dark, Damien Dark reveals that he has William. Who's William, John? That would be um, the son of Oliver Queen, who should actually be Connor Hall. Yeah. So, but yeah, he, we, he has him. We saw that last week. Uh, he introduced him to his daughter. That was the big cut and credits. And then we get this episode, I believe you just said, he reveals that he has it. So he's going to try to make him throw the race. Yeah. He, uh, Oliver Queen did actually drop out of the mayor's race. Um, and they discovered where Damien Dark was and had William at. And this is the mid-season finale. Or a few weeks episode yeah. finale. Yeah. Yeah. We just had a mid-season with yeah. two episodes, and we're back on the break. Right, right. Um, so, Felicity, at the end of the episode, ends the engagement with Oliver because Oliver lied to her and didn't tell her about William, which was heartbreaking, but at the same time... We also knew it was kind of coming. Yeah. Because it, he, it happened before. Right. He reversed time. But at the same time, it pissed her off enough to where she got up out of her wheelchair and walked. Without the chip? With the chip. Well, she had the chip in her. She has the chip in her that Mr. Cool. Terrific made for her. That is Mr. Terrific. It is yeah, Mr. I Terrific. Okay. Um, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> it's discovered that Malcolm Merlin is the one that actually kidnapped William for Dark. I noticed that, yeah. He's been working with Dark, and we don't know why. It's because Oliver cut his hand off. It is because Oliver. And lost the League of Assassins for him. Um, which, which caused uh, Thea to disown her father. Um, let's see here. We also see the live action version of Vixen. And they actually make a joke about that where Oliver says, uh, about a year ago we had an animated adventure together. Because there was a whole one shot animated adventure together yeah. that we have school. Um, vi they discover where Damien Dark is uh, pulling William, and they discover that all his power is because of this totem that's similar to Vixen's totem. And uh, Vixen gets the strength of a gorilla and starts smashing this totem. And finally, after like 10 times of trying to hit it against the ground, finally shatters. He tries to. Uh, Use his powers on Oliver. Oliver's got the arrow pointed at him. <clears throat> Nothing. He's like, well, that's odd. And Oliver just goes up and knocks him out. <laughs> um, let's see. Oliver actually sends William and, his, uh, and William's mom away and tells uh, William's mom not to even tell Oliver where they're going to keep them safe. So, um, overall, I would give this episode of Arrow, it was kind of obvious what was going to happen. But satisfying. Yeah. I, I, I would give it probably a seven. Uh, seven works. And also, William's mom knows Oliver is the Green Arrow. So there we go. Yeah. Uh, next up is Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow. Have you watched Legends of Tomorrow yet? Um, I've read a lot of the seven episodes, <coughs> trying to prepare, because I get a few episodes behind, I run a business, don't judge. Um, but yeah, it, we get to see, uh, It takes place Arrow. in Star City 2046. We, yeah, we get to see, uh, Future Ollie, uh, who, who pretty much who is pres yeah. He's presumed dead for like 15 years. Um, because of... Grant Wilson, which is Slade Wilson's son, Deathstroke's son, right. who's taken up the mantle of Deathstroke, uh, when he came to Star City and started causing riots and basically taking over and everything, Oliver kind of retired because all his friends got killed. And Felicity got killed. Diggle got killed. Diggle, that leaves us with Diggle Jr., who took over. John Diggle Jr. Took over the mantle of Green Arrow. He also took the name of Connor Hawk. Because the reason he took the name Connor Hawk is because he didn't feel worthy of his father's name because he failed he to protect his father. Found responsible for his dad's death. Right. <clears throat> um, so Sarah and Rip find Oliver, uh, who's grown a beard and is missing an arm, his left arm. 
Which is straight out of the Dark Knight yeah. Returns comic book. But, which is celebrating its 30th anniversary, by the way. Congrats. But Oliver has a robotic arm. And he becomes Green Arrow. I heard that. And they end up saving Connor Hawk, uh, who's about ready to get his head chopped off by Deathstroke. Deathstroke Jr. Yeah, Deathstroke Jr. Jr. <laughs> um, Good Jr. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Eyes on the wrong side. <laughs> let's see. Uh, and basically, Oliver gives Connor his blessing at being Green Arrow because. Star City will always need a Green Arrow, just like Gotham City will always need a Batman. Um, Come on, Terry McGinnis in Legend of Tomorrow. <laughs> Tell me you don't want to see Terry McGinnis right, yes. in Legend of Legends of Tomorrow. That would I, be I've awesome. seen fan-created uh, costumes yes, for that. that would be made out of the uh, Batman Begins suit. Yeah. Awesome. That would be awesome. <coughs> so, what else we got? Um, well, first, I would rate that episode... Maybe, maybe a five. Five? I'd go a little higher. To my Again, I'll get better reviews once I've seen the episode. I'm going to give it a five. five. Um, and that's simply because I didn't care for the way they portrayed Connor Hawk. Connor Hawk should be a completely different person. Or uh, Right. You know, um, they wanted to make it, I understand, they wanted to make the original character, they wanted to tie it to Daigle somehow. Right. So. But I also didn't like how they gave Oliver a robotic arm. Should have left it as just yeah. quite off, I agree. That's uh, what 5.5. Because 5. Yeah. it was still pretty cool to see a future. Right. Future uh, All right. version of Arrow. On to Supernatural. I'm a big Supernatural fan. I used to be a paranormal investigator. I stopped that for the first season or two. So. Um, Supernatural is really getting good because now... They're, they've got to fight to find a way to get rid of the darkness, which is God's sister. Isn't that every episode? Or every season? <laughs> kind of. But this is God's sister, so they're pretty much fighting God. Um, Who died in this episode? Which one of the brothers? No one died. <laughs> Sorry. Um, There's a pattern. This episode actually did guest star WWE's The Miz. Well, The Miz was in it? The Miz was the in Miz it. was in that episode? And he got killed. Well, that's just awesome! <laughs> Perfect setup. Don't steal it. <laughs> uh, another wrestler, an old wrestler, commits suicide. They think um, it ends up being a Supernatural-related type deal. No, um, you don't say <laughs> But Sam and Dean go to the funeral because they were huge fans of this wrestler. Their dad was a huge fan of this wrestler. Um, so they go to pay their respects. Uh, Dean basically becomes a fanboy and geeks out over all these professional wrestlers and everything. I see the only one that showed up. The Miz. Uh, yeah, The Miz was the only professional wrestler, I believe. Probably make some indie guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, it turns out... That all these wrestlers are being killed because they made deals with a demon. Crossroads okay. demon. Uh, King? No, not King. Oh, okay. Um, they made deals with this demon who's now collecting so that he has a bunch of souls to uh, use against the darkness whenever the darkness starts waging war. Which is God's daughter. God's, God's sister. God's sister. Yes. God and his angels imprison the darkness in order to create Earth. God is the light, the darkness is the darkness. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, Sam and Dean team up with, kind of team up with this uh, wrestler, uh, Wallace, um, who tells them what's been going on. And um, he basically, Wallace decides to turn on the demon who's been having him collect the souls for him, and kills the demon, and they end the episode with the hellhounds coming for him. Now, this wrestler Wallace, they should have brought in Sid Justice. Yeah. Yeah, they should have. But also in the episode, also in the episode, Lucifer searches for another hand of God. 
Lucifer now is taking over Castiel's body. Um, and he's searching for another hand of God in order to use against the darkness. He has Crowley, who used to be the king of hell, in chains, cleaning hell's floors with a toothbrush. But during this part, Lucifer goes over and takes the toothbrush away from uh, Crowley, makes him clean the floor with his tongue. Um, has him down on all four. Calls him his doggy. Don't Crowley laugh. is his, Lucifer's doggy. Don't laugh. Hitler has to clean a toilet with his tongue. <laughs> um, Crowley eventually escapes because he got help from another demon who ends up turning on Crowley. It was all this thing put together by Lucifer um, to find the other hand of God, which turns out to be the rod of Aaron. Don't laugh. <laughs> Um, That's what she said. Which there's act, when, whenever they find the rod of Aaron, there's all these jokes that Crowley makes about. He tells the demon, "You can't handle my rod," <laughs> and all these other things. Um, Time for a supernatural Walking Dead crossover. Hey, Jesus. <laughs> um, so anyway, the demon uh, Lucifer reveals that the demon was actually working for Lucifer the entire time even though the demon had told Crowley that there were still people who were loyal to Crowley. And uh, Crowley's got the rod of Aaron in his hands. Yeah. And uh, he goes to use it. He goes to use it. <laughs> he goes to use it on Lucifer, but the demon jumps in the way and gets disintegrated. With and, rod. Yeah, with Crowley's rod. That's a hell of a rod. <laughs> When Crowley, when Crowley goes to use the rod on Lucifer, he shoots blanks. It's not the way I use it. So, he says, Lucifer makes some comment about it, you know, apparently you used up all your rod's power, and gets ready to attack Crowley, and throws him back or whatever over a table, and when, uh, when Lucifer goes over to uh, finish the job on Crowley, Crowley's gone. So, uh, now Lucifer can't use the rod of Aaron. And he has already clean his floors. Yeah. Poor Lucifer. I would... Hitler, aisle three. <laughs> I would give this episode, simply because of the rod jokes, the rod jokes alone deserve it a solid six. The rest of the episode... I would give maybe a four. Well, your basic supernatural episode. Right. Question, should the series end? They're past what? They're yeah. past seven. If they're going to end supernatural, they need to at least have God show up because this whole series has been about angels and demons. We've seen Lucifer. We've seen, you know, all this stuff. God's gone missing. He's... He's in the hospital because he got knocked by a bunch of high, hockey demons playing ski ball. <laughs> yeah. um, I would like to see Supernatural go a uh, 12th season. So they're on season 11 now. Yes. They surpassed Smallville. Yes, they did. Um, I would like to see them go on to season 12 just to wrap everything up. What about a nice e and I evil 13? There, yeah, that would be good, too. Maybe have God show up in uh, season 13. Um, which, I mean, that looks like the route they might take. Yeah. I mean, there's only so many times that Sam and Dean can die and come back. Apparently not. <laughs> They're Kenny. <laughs> oh, my God. You kill him again. You <laughs> At this there, point, there was one episode where, before the trickster died, where Trickster was screwing with Sam, and he just kept killing Dean off, like, hundreds of times. So, uh, yeah. There's also another show that I'm really liking right now. Uh, we're not going to review it in this episode. Lucifer. I've been meaning to catch that. Based on uh, the DC Vertigo yeah. comic book series, right. who also appeared, if you're a big Neil Gaiman Sandman fan, he's appeared in many issues of that. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that. Lucifer is basically your typical cop buddy drama. He, he's, but he gave up hell. He doesn't want to be 
that, that, not the king of hell anymore. He wants to just. But here. there's. But God wants him to go back to hell. But the, he can't make him. Right. And uh, he just can't come back to heaven. The the way they the way they portray Lucifer in this show, I felt forever. That's how the actual. If Lucifer actually exists, that's, that's how he would what's be. It, what's, uh, what, that's on what station? Uh, Fox, I believe. How many episodes in? We are, I believe, five episodes five in. Five episodes in. I'll have to check who it might still be on there. Um, Gotham's not back yet. Gotham returns next week, this Monday. Mr. Freeze. Uh, they're introducing Mr. Freeze. I think it's a big mistake. I'm interested in seeing it. I'm all caught up right now. So we'll hit, uh, catch on that next week. Yeah. And, yeah. Anything else? Um... Not unless you watch Eye Zombie. I don't. Not yet. I caught the first few episodes. We're Can't gonna, really get into it. We're going to go back and we're, we're going to watch the first season. Try to. And uh, i got to get the phone. Store phone. Be right back to close. Okay. Alright, so Good. thanks you guys for tuning in to come again this week. It was fun. Yeah, it was. Um, hopefully we can do this weekly, depending on viewership. Um, and depending on time. If you like it, uh, subscribe. Comment. Share on Facebook. It'll be on Featured on both of our channels, uh, Geeking Out Comics and my own personal Shannon Corthway channel. Um, you can, uh, if you have any questions about uh, my store here at 2924 North Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Decatur, Illinois. What was that? What was that? 2924 North Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, in Decatur, Illinois. You can uh, find me on Facebook at Geeking Out Comics. Um, look for the storefront, not the Green Lantern logo. Uh, email at geekingoutcomics at yahoo.com. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, message me on the website geekingoutcomics.com. He even occasionally comments on comicbookmovie.com. Me as well. Uh, I'm Lantern Storm on there. I am Iron Lantern 79 on there. Um, anything else? Um, no, until next week, uh, don't take Daryl and Carol out to watch the flowers. Where Jesus behind you.